Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining this webinar series kickoff, The Future of Small Scale Sterile Filling. My name is Sarah and I am the Marketing Specialist at Berkshire Sterile Manufacturing and I will be your host for today. We have 13 industry leaders and professionals online from five different companies to give you a brief overview of a new sterile filling line that's being installed at BSM. They will be discussing the types of technology and innovation that is being incorporated in today's most cutting edge sterile filling lines and introducing the topics for our future webinars as a part of this series. Before we get into the presentation, we will have a Q&A with our speakers at the end of this event. To ask a question, you can select a word bubble that appears in the toolbar at the right hand side of your screen. Send us your questions through there at any time during this presentation and our off-screen moderator will help display those questions to be answered. We will be speaking to all of these wonderful people, including seven representatives from BSM, two from Steriline, and one from Clarinor, Colinar, Genesis, and EMA. So without further ado, let's get started. Berkshire Sterile Manufacturing CEO and co-founder Dr. Sean Kinney is online. Sean, can you briefly tell us about your background in sterile manufacturing? Thanks, Sarah. I started my career in sterile manufacturing in 1983 as a manufacturing technician performing sterile filling of hyaluronic acid into ready-to-use syringes on a 10-head Cazzoli filler. The filling was performed in a traditional open-air class 100 room with no shrouding around the filler or special protection for the sterile product. The industry has certainly evolved over the years to the sophisticated filler we will describe today. During my career, I have installed seven sterile filling lines in several clean rooms. Today, I would like to describe the eighth filling line, which is a state-of-the-art filler involving several new technologies and will be operational late this year. I believe this new line will be setting the expectation for future sterile filling lines. That's great to hear, Sean. Can you tell us what the future of sterile filling is? Uh, where is the industry headed? As I said earlier, I have overseen the development of several sterile filling lines, and I have noticed consistent trends over that time. Separation of the operators from the sterile filling environment, reduction of operator interactions through automation, better sanitization of the filling environment, largely with vaporized hydrogen peroxide, improvements in the introduction of equipment and containers into the sterile core, sophistication of data collection around the operation and performance of equipment and the environment, increased flexibility of low to medium speed fillers. All of these have led to an increase in sterility assurance levels. Today's contract manufacturers can purchase equipment that can fill several type, different types of containers and sizes on the same line instead of separate lines to fill each type of container improvements in isolator technology which is the best environment for sterile operations has made isolators now the expectation in sterile filling for many years some companies avoided isolators because of their inflexibility cost turnover times and misconception bsm has a webinar that can be found on our website about the misconception of isolators there are some relatively recent technologies that bsm along with its equipment suppliers is incorporating into this new filling line that's very interesting. Sean, can you share some more about the new filling line that is in construction at BSM? BSM is in the process of a $20 million expansion of its GMP manufacturing facility, which will culminate in a state-of-the-art filling line. Major pieces of this equipment include a Mueller WFI and pure steam system consisting of a triple effect still, a pure steam generator, five additional Wi-Fi drops, and a 6,000 liter storage tank. We will be doubling our clean room by adding 4,000 square feet of new clean room space. Additionally, this ex expansion includes a 15 square meter lyophilizer from EMA, a second manufacturing autoclave, a sterility test isolator, and an ultramodern isolator-based flexible filling system. This isolator system combines some of the newest technologies that we believe will become the standard for future sterile filling lines. This system is capable of filling 2 through 100 ml RTU vials, RTU syringes and cartridges, and bulk glass vials. It features robots to eliminate operator interaction, a positive decontamination step for RTU containers, 
and 100% real-time IPC for some containers. Thank you, Sean. I just want to let our viewers know that this webinar is the first of a series of webinars about this very innovative flexible system. This webinar will describe the genesis of the idea, the initial planning and design, important considerations, and how VSM has worked with multiple quality equipment manufacturers to make this a reality. Teams at Steriline, Colinar, Clarinor, EMA, Genesis, and VSM were all involved in this project. I want to thank all of our viewers for participating in this webinar today, and I hope that you find something interesting and useful and that, of course, you'll come for the follow-up webinars that will go far more in depth about these topics. So again, thank you. Um, Sean, thanks again for your input. I'm going to bring our viewers back to the origin of this filling line. Dr. Andrea Wagner, who's also a co-founder and the Senior Vice President of Business Development at BSM, knows this story all too well. So Andrea, how did BSM find this technology and decide what was going to go into this filling line? Hi, Sarah. This all began at a sales meeting with key members of the executive team in 2019. We met with the sales team and we discussed what our clients really wanted in the sterile filling line. And this is what we came up with. We knew that clients wanted the best in class sterility assurance. So an isolator was a definite. We also needed to incorporate flexibility and container choice in that line not necessarily because clients are attracted to flexible lines, but we didn't want to turn away clients if they needed a syringe fill over a vial fill, for example, or a cartridge fill over a syringe fill. So this line had to be able to fill popular container sizes, including one ml long syringes, one to three ml standard syringes, two to 30 ml vials, and three ml cartridges. We also needed to increase our capacity to help carry our clients further into their clinical trials or into commercialization. So we decided to expand our liquid filling speeds up to 50,000 units in 20 hours and our lyophilization capability um, up to 30,000 10 hour vials. Finally, some clients use bulk vials or ready to use containers, RTU containers. So we needed depyrogenation capability on the line and wanted a decontamination system for the RTU tubs to give the ultimate in sterility assurance. We were looking for technologies to improve sterility assurance and flexibility because um, we created this overwhelming wish list. We talked to many equipment vendors uh, and manufacturers to determine the, what technology they had and if they could do the job in our timeline and importantly if they could work with other equipment manufacturers to create this unique line. So Andrea I'm listening to the story and I'm a little surprised you didn't first explore to see what already existed before you created this wish list? No we knew what we wanted in the line and that we would have to spend more time and effort to identify equipment manufacturers with advanced technologies that could work together. This wasn't just about purchasing a new filling line. This is about creating something that would provide the best in class for our clients, making Berkshire Sterile Manufacturing stand out and stay true to our mission to provide the safest and highest quality possible. Um, we wanted to redefine the future of sterile filling, and you cannot do that by purchasing an existing line. Thank you, Andrea. That was well said. Uh, let's keep this webinar going. I want to move on to Lindsay Lundgren, who is the QC Microbiology Manager at BSM. Lindsay, sterility assurance is a key deciding factor for clients looking for fill finish CMOs. What technology can increase sterility assurance and how did this factor into the decisions made for BSM's new filling line? So there's a lot of great technology that can improve sterility assurance. Recognizing that isolators provide a much greater sterility assurance than traditional clean rooms, BSM chose isolators for all of our aseptic processing. As we designed this new filling line, we wanted to provide the optimum sterility assurance while creating the most robust system possible utilizing these new technologies that would improve the SAL. We recognize that introduction of RTU containers into the isolator is a potential means for contaminate, contamination. Although no-touch transfer systems have been adequately applied to the successful transfer of RTU containers, 
BSM desired to have a positive decontamination system to eliminate dependence upon NTT systems as the sole means to prevent possible contamination. The technologies that we considered included flash steam sterilization, sterilant gases such as VHP, E-beam, and pulse light. Flash steam sterilization was not advanced to the point that it was ready for this application. Gaseous sterilants such as VHP are effective at sanitizing surfaces and we use them to sanitize the interior of all of our isolators, but we were concerned about residues on the surface of containers, especially those with rubber and plastic components. Then we looked at E-beam systems, which can sterilize the outer, outer surfaces of containers in seconds with minimal impact to the materials inside. These systems are commercially available and effective, but they're very large, expensive, and not environmentally friendly. So looking at pulse light, it's already in use in many industries. It left no residue, has demonstrated sufficient log reduction of bio burden, and can provide the line speed required for the new line. So we selected a pulse light system to use in addition to the traditional no-touch transfer systems. Pulse light sanitization is actually a topic that we'll discuss in more detail in one of our webinar series. Another key element to increase sterility assurance is to reduce operator interactions in the filling line. There's some discussion in the industry about gloveless isolators. This is a remarkable idea. However, it has the risk of encountering machine failures where an adjustment by a manufacturing techni technician is needed to continue, but it's impossible to do so because you don't have glove ports. So at BSM, we designed our new line with robots to minimize operator interaction and reduce our dependence on gloves. If the equipment's working correctly, no or minimal glove uses will be required, but the gloves are present in the event that they're needed. Reducing operator interactions decreases our glove usage and therefore reduces the chances of glove failures. So we employed four robots in our filling line, as well as an automated load and unload system for the lyophilizer to eliminate operator interactions. The new line's fully automated. It won't be gloveless, but it will essentially be operatorless. Some other sterility assurance considerations involve VHP sanitization of the isolators and equipment to a validated six log reduction, as well as depyrogenation of bulk glass containers to a four log reduction of endotoxin with immediate introduction into the isolator. Uh, some final requirements included unidirectional airflow, overpressure, ease of environmental sampling, and ergonomic considerations. Thank you. So just to recap, Lindsay, you mentioned three techniques or technologies to increase sterility. The first is isolator technology. Uh, that certainly has become the expectation. The second is active decon an active decontamination chamber, which is new. Um, and finally, technologies to reduce operator interactions, otherwise known as automation, possibly through the use of robots as BSM is doing. Um, so now I know that many viewers are likely interested in learning more about the pulse light technology. So I am inviting Dr. Christoph Riedel, CEO of Clarinor, to speak. Christoph, can you tell us more about your company and about this new technology? Of course, Sarah. So Clarinor, we are the first company that has developed and uh, industrialized the technology of pulse light. This was for packaging, decontamination and sterilization. We have installed over 450 units in uh, businesses where the product has a high microbiological sensitivity as an alternative to, uh, to chemical disinfection, conventional uh, process. Now BSM is putting a pulse light system um, in their new flexible filling line to increase the sterility assurance of RTU containers before uh, entering the isolator. This uh, is a common development with the Steriline. And in this application, the, the pulse light, so the intense pulses of white light containing a high content of uh, UV, uh, they will uh, destroy immediately the bacteria because of the combination between damages on the DNA and proteins, and high power. This will be the first equipment of this kind in the, in the US. And this is a very exciting application. And uh, we will describe it in details in a future webinar in this series. Thank you, Christoph. I'm sure that many viewers are eagerly looking forward to that webinar, uh, where we will be able to give them more in-depth um, information and the time and detail that it deserves. 
We still have many others to get to today. I'm going to turn the focus over to Tyler Rush, who is the Vice President of Manufacturing at BSM. Tyler, can you tell us about building flexibility into an isolator? Were there any challenges you faced when you were trying to do this? Thanks, Sarah. I'd love to. I can tell you that there were many challenges we had to overcome. Our salespeople wanted us to fill as many different container types and sizes as possible. We immediately ruled out separate machines for each container type due to space, cost, and operational considerations. As a leading CMO with flexible filling system, BSM already had two isolator-based flexible filling lines, each capable of filling a wide range of vials, syringes, and cartridges. The new line, however, we wanted to have greater capacity with new innovative technologies available to increase sterility assurance levels and quality. We wanted to employ the same type of flexible filling that BSM had been performing, but at a larger scale. This meant we needed to expand our lyophilization capabilities and have the possibility of larger batch sizes in vials, syringes, and cartridges with the highest sterility assurance. It was important that BSM have the capability to handle both bulk and RTU vials to support our customers. We knew that one challenge would be handling bulk vials. BSM's existing flexible filling line utilized a depyrogenation oven for batch processing of vials and nested stainless steel trays. This was simply not going to work with the scale required in the new line. We had to employ an inline bulk vial washing in conjunction with a depyrogenation tunnel to process vials faster. This meant the filling equipment manufacturer had to find a way to make their system work with both bulk vials coming in on a conveyor belt and those in RTU formats. The filling line needed to have a speed of at least 3,000 units per hour to provide the maximum batch size required. The vial washer, depyrogenation tunnel, RTU handling system, and filler, lyo loading all needed to work at this speed. The capper was designed to have a speed of 6,000 units per hour. This was faster than needed for liquid vial filling, but would allow lyophilization of batch sizes up to 50,000 and capping in approximately eight hours. We also needed to consider the turnover of the filling line. The target time of the VHP cycle from start to finish of aeration is two hours. We will have multiple VHP cycles to allow for efficient sanitization of the multi-chamber isolators chambers required for manufacturing tasks. I could probably go on for a lot longer, but I know you have other people you need to get to. Thank you, Tyler. Bern Schroeder, CEO of Colonar, I'm sure that you have more to say about this topic. Colonar is a company that specializes in creating advanced liquid filling systems and automated handling systems for pharma and biotech. So Bernd, can you describe to us the design of this filler, including some of the difficulties you had or you may have had faced and solutions that you've found to overcome these challenges? Thank you for the introduction. I love to tell you about this project. As you said, Colonar builds the fillers on both BSM existing isolator-based flexible filling lines. On BSM's new line, the desired line speed and total fill quantities worked well with RTU containers on the Colonar XY filler platform, where trays of vials, cartridges or syringes are loaded in and out of the filler. However, upstream challenges that BSM faced with bulk vial processing presented a quandary. How do you fill bulk vials presented off a conveyor belt with an XY-based filling system? We were able to develop a solution to this by feeding vials into a scroll, then using two robots to nest and denest the vials. The scroll ensured proper vial spacing so they could be picked up by a robot and loaded into a tray, while a previously loaded tray was being filled onto the XY filler. Simultaneously, another robot unloads a previously filled tray onto an outfeed conveyor. In this manner, loading, filling and unloading are all occurring at the same time, ensuring the desired line speed could be met. Nested RTU vials are loaded a whole nest at a time, but only unloaded in the same manner as bulk vials. RTU syringes and cartridges are loaded onto the filler a whole nest at a time by the loading robot. 
After filling, the unloading robot places the whole nest back into its RTU tub and pushes it out of the isolator chamber through a mouse hole. This filling system design can handle both bulk vials and nested RTU containers while eliminating operators and further ensuring the quality of the sterile filling operations. <coughs> This line has unique technologies in addition to its ability to accommodate bulk and RTU containers. For example, this filler will contain a special recipe for vials, which can deliver headspace with oxygen levels reliably lower than 1%. After filling a vial, this technology evacuates the headspace and then purchase with nitrogen. Evacuation time and nitrogen purging time, both with and without vacuum, can be controlled to optimize the reduction of oxygen in the headspace. Another advancement is a non-destructive 100% real-time volume measurement of drug product on this line. We can measure the volume filled into every syringe and bulk valve without reducing the line speed by using a patent-pending new technology. This technology utilizes radio waves to measure the fill volume into the, in these containers. It can be in addition to the traditional IPC measurements or in place of them. A low energy radio wave is sent through the syringe or vial to a receiver on the opposite side. The signal processed by the receiver is related to the number of molecules in the container, which is used to calculate the fill volume. We will elaborate on this technology later in this webinar series. Thank you, Bern. I'm sure that this webinar will be very exciting because many filling lines could benefit from 100% non-destructive volume measurements, especially when it doesn't slow down production. I want to focus attention on arguably the most important part of this line, the isolators. Steriline, which is a manufacturer of integrated isolators, washing and depyrogenation tunnels, filling systems, and other pharmaceutical equipment, is located in beautiful Lake Como, Italy. <laughs> We will be speaking to Randy Fratz, who is the Vice President of North American Operations, and Federico Fumigali, who is Steriline's CCO. Um, so please, let's start with you, Randy. Uh, your team is heavily involved in this project because you have to map out the entire line and work directly with all of the suppliers to custom build this isolator to incorporating all of this technology. Can you describe when Steriline became involved in this project and what this project entails? Yes, of course, I would be happy to. Uh, first, though, I would just like to commend BSM on initiating this webinar and this webinar series because I think this is a wonderful opportunity to share a lot of very valuable information with the pharmaceutical community. So um, at Steriline, we began communicating with BSM regarding their new flexible isolated filling line back around August of 2019. And the requirements were super interesting, uh, a little bit challenging in the respect what BSM wanted was a multi-format, multi-functional line with the ability to process bulk vials in addition to a wide range of ready-to-use or RTU containers, uh, that being syringes, vials, and cartridges. Uh, in, in addition to that, there were some special requirements and considerations that we needed to keep in mind, uh, such as BSM was interested in implementing a positive decontamination process for the RTU tubs. And BSM had selected the filling machine already. So we just needed to be prepared uh, from Steriline side to integrate our isolator with uh, their selected filler. And they wanted to have the capability of um, integrating a diverting system, which would allow the transport of liquid filled vials to a crimp capping machine, lyo filled vials to an automatic loading and unloading station for a lyophilizer, and, and then after a lyo process, sending those vials through this diverting system to the crimp capper to be crimp capped. Um, in relation to the lyophilization, BSM also has an interest to integrate a second lyo at some point in the future. 
And this is of particular importance regarding the scope of a project like this because it's important now that we um, consider the, the, the process calculations, the component selection, the programming, and these different types of design details that we can integrate in the scope of the line now, which will make the process of implementing that second Lyle when BSM decides to do that much easier, much more streamlined, and certainly much more efficient. Um, another interesting aspect uh, regarding this line was the fact that BSM um, had selected at least three other equipment manufacturers to provide major pieces of equipment for this line solution. So from Sterline's perspective, of course, we needed to be uh, prepared to collaborate and interface um, with these vendor partners and their equipment solutions. So we could design and implement the best consolidated containment solution possible. Uh, just to give you an idea of the overall scope of the line and what's included kind of at a high level, from a bulk vial perspective, there's a vial washer which feeds a depyrogenation tunnel, which is then interfaced with a rotating table accumulation system under isolation to then feed the vials to the filling machine. From a RTU or ready to use perspective, there's a no touch transfer debagging machine, which is then interfaced with the robotic pulse light decontamination system for decontaminating the external surfaces of the RTU tubs. That machine is interfaced with the robotic D-Lid D-Liner machine, uh, also of course under isolation, which is then connected with the filling machine to feed the RTU containers to the filler. Uh, the filler consists of the two robots for the filling process, and then the filler is interfaced with the positive diverting machine, uh, which again, that system is utilized to transport vials, uh, liquid-filled vials directly to the crimp capper, Lyle-filled vials to the automatic loading and unloading station, and then post Lyle those vials to the crimp capper. So all in all, when you look at this solution, there are six different isolators uh, that are incorporated into the scope. There are two different RABs, four different robotic systems, and then of course all the appropriate um, pass-throughs and active mouse holes to make sure that regardless of the pathway, the containers are being transported in the most efficient, safest way to maintain that highest sterility assurance level. I just need to add that um, this type of flexible solution is very clever on the part of BSM and, and for their customers because this flexibility allows you to um, integrate different processes and utilize different processes simultaneously. For example, you could have an in-process Lyo batch running while simultaneously be running a liquid filling campaign, let's say for ready-to-use syringes, without any possibility of those different events or activities ever interacting or influencing one another. So again, this type of uh, flexible design um, provides a lot of opportunity for, for BSM and, and for BSM's customers. Thank you, Randy. I have to agree with you. This is just an incredible line that Steriline is helping to build. Can you describe to us the process of designing this isolator, including decisions you made and why? Uh, I can answer that for you. After we take virtual meetings with uh, BSM and the other equipment manufacturers, Steriline developed the following plan. We would first create separate, in, separate entrance for bulk bias and RTU containers uh, that meet at the right angles of the filling machine isolator. The RTU entrance uh, will contain a no-touch transfer uh, that feeds the uh, tub to the Sterilize Pulse Light uh, Sterilizer that sterilizes the surface of the tubs by means of Pulse Light uh, made by Claranor. And uh, 
the out, outlet of this isolator goes to a robotic delete lining uh, machine that feeds the filling machine. The uh, bulk vials, they come uh, through a, a washing machine that goes into an uh, into a deparogenation tunnel and uh, uh, out, out of the sterilization tunnel there is the turntable isolator which feeds the scroll, uh, the screw, uh, which is used by the robot to fill the, uh, feed the uh, filling machine. The, uh, we are coming to the most important uh, isolator, the isolator of the filling machine. That is the, actually the largest of the, of the project and also the most challenging with these uh, four mouse holes and uh, the two robots. It uh, has two different exits. One for the RTU containers, like syringes and cartridges, that once filled and, and closed, they come out through a mouse hole into a small reps, or for the vials that need to go or to the capping machine that is under a simple reps, or to the LIO loading and loading system of the uh, LIO fertilizer. The uh, isolator, they have three different uh, um, VHP cycles. One is to VHP all isolator chambers for a lyophile. The other one is the, to VHP everything but the lyo uh, isolator for the liquid fields. And the last uh, will VHP just the lyo isolator and the diverting isolator for unloading the lyo. A standalone VHP system is uh, used for the pulse light sterilizer and a dry heat cycle is used to sanitize the progenation tunnel. All VHP cycles will be validated with a six log reduction of geobacillus thermophilus spores. This is much better sterility assurance level than found in the filling lines that use only a rubs or a traditional grade A classroom. Like Tyler mentioned, validating the VHP cycle in the isolator will be a topic in this webinar series. Randy and I are looking forward to speaking more about the projects. Well, thank you both for your time and insight. Uh, let's move on to EMA. EMA is a manufacturer of integrated isolators, filling systems, lyophilizers, and other pharmaceutical equipment. Today I have Chris Fee on the line. Chris is the project and sales manager at EMA. Chris, can you tell us what EMA's involvement is in this project? Yes, for sure. I'd be happy to. Uh, BSM has purchased three freeze dryers from EMA over the years. Uh, the first is a lab scale one square meter machine for R&D and product testing. Uh, the second is a clinical scale machine, what we call a Liamax 3, with three square meters of shelf area. Uh, for CGMP production, uh, this machine has batch capacity up to 5,000 10R vials and is in, it is installed on BSM's uh, semi-automatic vial filling line. Uh, the third and latest project is for commercial production. This is a Liamax 15 with 15 square meters of shelf area. Uh, this system enables BSM to handle uh, batch capacities up to 30,000 10R vials at a time. The Liamax 15 is part of a fully isolated fully automated vial filling line at BSM. Uh, accordingly, EMA has integrated a, an automatic vial loading and unloading system as part of the freeze dryer. Um, automatic loading and unloading of vials uh, in and out of the freeze dryer is uh, essential to providing the highest level of sterility assurance in the aseptic process. Um, EMA's system is considered best in class, and we've spent the last 30 years developing and innovating this technology. Um, and we're happy to be partnering with BSM on their important projects. This all sounds very exciting. Um, thank you so much for the work that your team is doing. I will be switching our focus over to Genesis. 
Genesis Technologies has its headquarters located in Pennsylvania. They specialize in vial closure technologies and have produced the cappers for both the manual and semi-automatic filling lines at BSM. Today we have Gary Peterson online to talk with us who is the Director of Technical Sales at Genesis. Gary, can you tell us a little bit more about your company and the work that you do um, and your involvement with this new filling line? Hey Sarah, thanks a lot for the introduction. I really appreciate it. My name is Gary Peterson. I'm the Director of Sales for Genesis Packaging Technologies. Um, Genesis came to be in 1946 as part of the West Company. We were the West Machine Company back then. We introduced our first capper, the PW Series, back in 1946. PW Series has a sealing disc technology that is used to crimp the vials. Um, this technology is still in use today. Um, and it, our first machine, uh, 001, PW001, is still working on the market today. We actually have PW002 in our shop today. Um, the next introduction we did was in 1976, which was with the RW600 West Capper. West Capper use, utilizes a completely different technology for sealing the caps. Um, the sealing technology we use on the West Capper is the RW West Capper is sealing rail technology. What this does, it allows each vial to see the exact same sealing rail. That way, each vial does not need to be, each um, head does not need to be adjusted. Each vial runs over the exact same rail. We get higher speeds that way. We get a cleaner product that way. We get a more consistent crimp. And the customer does not have to adjust all the different sealing heads to make sure that they're in alignment. Um, the other thing about the RWS capper is, is that uh, we are utilized in, we develop grabs, um, isolators, glove ports, vision systems to detect uh, missing stoppers, raised stoppers, or missing caps. Uh, we also specialize in re residual seal force measurement. In here we have developed in 2001 the AWG. The AWG is a residual seal force testing facility that can um, determine how best the vial and the container closure integrity is done on each vial that is sealed. In, uh, actually also we introduced a version 2 of that in 2020. Um, the other technology that we have is the Integra cappers, which Berkshire has on one of their lines. The Integra capper is a smaller platform of sealing, of excuse me, disc sealer um, that is used mainly in labs, smaller sealing settings, um, clinical supply houses, things like that. The Integra comes in three different versions where you can have a single vial use, you can have a star wheel use, and you can have um, turntables that actually feed the Integra. And again, Berkshire has one of these lines on their, in their uh, filling line right now. Additional value by Genesis is created through the lab studies that we do. We've done a ton of them this year, or I'm sorry, in, in 2020 for COVID, for all the major manufacturers of the vaccines and the therapies. Um, we also do capper, op capper optimization. We utilize our expert, Robert, or Roger uh, Aselta, um, in training and in educating the public and the pharmaceutical companies about residual seal force and container closure integrity. Genesis has been blessed, as I said, with multiple lines at uh, Berkshire. Um, we've got two of our cappers in there right now. One of them, as I said, is the Integra, which is a modified Integra. It's smaller to fit in their isolator. And the second line is an RW4, which is utilized with the sealing rail technology. Um, our friends at Berkshire approached us uh, mid-year or early last year um, with the challenge of incorporating the RW major RW capper platform into a smaller version. They needed the smaller version in order to fit in this in their in the obviously in the brand new line that they were building and utilizing some of the technology from Sterline. So a lot of the work that we are doing right now on the RW um, 6M incorporates work with Sterline to create success for that capper base. We're able to design the RW6M uh, to meet Berkshire's obviously stringent requirements, uh, meet the size, the speed, the output, the vision detection systems. Again, we've taken basically the big RW platform and shrunk it, the RW600 platform, and shrunk it down into a smaller machine that fits better into the uh, Berkshire production model. Um, as I said, this machine will also incorporate speeds of up to 200 to 300 vials per minute. 
Uh, it will have vision detectives, detection systems at the front end of the machine for stopper detection as well as the back end of the machine for uh, missing cap detection. Um, it is under RABS, under grade A quality air with um, unidirectional flow. And as I said, we're working very closely with Stairline in order to maximize the success of this project. So thanks a lot, Sarah. I appreciate the time. Um, as Ron White said when he was arrested for drunk in public, I had the right to remain silent, but I just didn't have the ability. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you, Gary, especially for adding some humor into today's webinar. Let's move on. So BSM's validation and engineering team is here to talk to us about the expansion. Subhas Ray, who is BSN's Vice President of Validation and Engineering, and Ron Trusker, the Senior Vice, uh, senior Manager of Engineering at BSM, are both online. Subhas, uh, let's start with you. Can you tell us what is unique about this line? Uh, what challenges did you face with the design work for this project, and what solutions did your team find? Thanks for the introduction, Sarah. This flex bull filling line has significant improvements over other flex filling lines in several ways. First, it's able to handle bulk files and RTU containers. Second, it's the first small scale filling line that uses positive decontamination of the outside of RTU tubs. Third, this line has real time 100% volume measurements in syringes, vials, and appropriate nests. And finally, this line has the flexibility to add an additional lyophilizer at a later date. Some of the challenges we face involve coordinating with several suppliers from across the country and across the globe. There were language barriers and time differences that we had to overcome, and we needed to co collaborate closely to get the full picture of what was we needed and how we could achieve that in the filling line design. As you can imagine, this was all complicated further by the pandemic and shutdowns it caused. Our solution was to schedule a bi-weekly meeting with all the groups involved to discuss the design aspects we had to focus on. This involved line speeds, material flow within the isolator, container handling for the filler, in-process checks, operating modes, and data reporting mechanisms. After all the aspects of design were considered and selected, a remote mock-up of the isolator was built. Testing will be completed to simulate the final construction of the isolator to ensure all operations and process functions can be performed through the isolator ports without having to break containment. So, this included verification of glove locations to ensure ability to reach all locations within the isolators optimal RTP and mouse hole locations, correct door opening directions, and positioning of viable non-viable sample locations. Another possible, another challenge and possibly the most difficult aspect of this project is the validation of this new line. Again, this could not be accomplished without a lot of planning and involvement and participation of all the vendors Thank you, Sabas. Uh, that is actually a very good segue into the question I had for Ron. So Ron, can you tell me about the validation plan for this line? How will this be done since there are multiple pieces of equipment and suppliers involved? That's a very good question, Sarah. Um, as is true for any piece of equipment that will be used for GMP, we need to demonstrate that the equipment involved in this line is the correct equipment when we receive it, that it will function as intended, and that it delivers the outcome reliably. Accuracy plus reliability equals precision, and that's what we're after here. There are several activities associated with this. Factory acceptance tests and, and site acceptance tests are used to indicate that the system meets the specified design and manufacturing specifications. Installation qualifications demonstrate process equipment and ancillary systems are compliant with appropriate codes and approved design intentions and that manufacturer's recommendations are suitably considered. Operational qualifications indicate that the process equipment are, and subsystems are capable of consistently operating within stated limits and tolerances. And finally, 
performance qualifications demonstrate that the finished product or outcome produced by a specified process meets all these requirements for functionality and safety and that all procedures are effective and reproducible. Borrowing from QA, say what you do, do what you say. Loosely translated, the technical version of this is say what you're going to do, prepare to do it, and prove it. We will be performing FATs, SATs, IQs, and OQs for the equipment as separate units. For some of the units, we will also perform separate PQs. We will perform then perform a PQ of the entire assembled system. Validations will include all VHP cycles for the isolators and pulse light system, dry heat sterilization of the tunnel, deprogenation of vials, and smoke studies for air flows. We are still designing the validation plan, and that will be the subject of a future webinar in this series. We have started by developing a risk analysis to identify the greatest challenges to sterility and utilize this to design aseptic process simulations and media fills. This will ensure a robust assurance of product sterility with aseptic process design that does not require testing with all container types and sizes. Again, this will be the subject of a future webinar in this series of webinars. Thank you, Ron. This sounds complicated, but also very interesting. Ron and Subhas will be starring in several webinars as a part of this series regarding validation work, media study design, and VHP validation. I'll explain more of that in detail at the end of this webinar, but let's go on to our final speaker. Last but not least, we have VSN's Vice President of Quality Assurance, Debbie Smith, online. Debbie, I often heard it said before that everyone in Phil Finish is in the race to be second as far as new advancements are concerned. Obviously, there are big risks of what if this doesn't work or what if the regulators don't approve of this design. This filling line that BSM is creating will be the first of its kind for small batch sterile filling. What is the QA team at BSM doing to ensure that this build out is successful and meets FDA and EU requirements? Great question, Sarah. To ensure the build out of the new facility at BSM is executed according to regulations, Quality Assurance has provided and will continue to provide oversight of all aspects of the project, from design and vendor selection to commissioning and qualification. QA works closely with the engineering department to ensure good engineering practices are followed to meet FDA requirements. In many respects, regulations are the key drivers for the design of the facility, with considerations for safety, contamination control, and environmental monitoring. The clean rooms are designed and classified to meet FDA, ISO, and EU GMP requirements. The design of the facility and equipment were a combined effort with quality assurance manufacturing, materials management, quality control, and engineering. Each department's requirements were assessed to determine the best fit for purpose. Validation programs are subject to change controls. Therefore, an umbrella change control was initiated for the expansion and children change controls initiated for each associated clean room, water system, and equipment. QA oversees a change control program and will be reviewing and approving all change controls and impacted documents to ensure they meet regulatory requirements. QA will ensure all required qualifications are executed successfully and the applicable standard operating procedures are written effectively. The release of the facility for use is based on meeting all requirements as specified in the change controls along with QA's final approval. Once a facility is released, QA will continue to provide oversight in the operation and maintenance of the facility and equipment. Thank you, Debbie. It's critical that quality be involved in the design and fabrication right from the very beginning. That concludes this seminar, the first in a series of webinars on this flexible filling system. I urge you to join us for the future webinars as a part of this series. Here I have listed the full list of webinars that will be a part of this series as well as their air dates and the companies that will be participating in those events. I will be sending you each an email with a sign up link to each of these events following the end of this webinar. But you can also sign up directly by going to berkshiresterilemanufacturing.com slash events slash webinars. 
and the events will be listed there for you to register to. We will start taking questions now, so if you haven't already, go ahead and select the word bubble that appears in the toolbar at the right-hand side of your screen. Type in your question and send it to our team to see. I'm going to give our moderator a minute just to collect your responses, um, so just hang tight as we transition over to the Q&A. Wow, so it seems like we have a lot of responses. Um, we have selected five questions to answer. Maybe we can get to six. So Sean, I know that Lindsay touched on the subject, but I think that you may be able to offer a good response to this. Can you explain more about the gloves? Gloveless systems should be better than having gloves. So why didn't you design your system that way? That is really an excellent question, and that is a subject of debate in the industry right now. Gloveless systems sound great. However, there's no ability to intervene if there's a mechanical failure, if a vial falls over and gets caught, if a syringe breaks. We have gloves which are not used if everything works correctly. However, if there is a problem, we have the ability to use the gloves to fix whatever the issue is and continue the manufacturing run. We like to say that we're essentially operatorless, not gloveless. Great, thank you, Sean. Now I have a question for Sabas. Um, the question is, if your lyophilizer was in a vacuum cycle and you had a very small leak while you were running VHP, you could potentially get VHP exposure to drug product. How do you protect against this? <clears throat> this was addressed in the design of the isolator to address the possible scenario of a leak in the door seal of the LIO. The LIO chamber, the LIO door, will be isolated in its own loading and unloading chamber. In the subsequent fills, after the chamber has been decontaminated, loaded, and cycle started, the chamber will not be exposed to VHP until after the LIO cycle has been completed. This will ensure that if during a LIO cycle there is a leak, product in the LIO will not be exposed to VHP. Thanks, Subhas. Um, next, I have another one for Burn at Colinar. Burn, I, we all knew that you're going to get asked this. Um, the question is on the new 100% IPC technology, you mentioned, you only mentioned this works for syringes and bulk vials. Will this work for cartridges or RTU vials? If not, why not? And how will you perform IPC? RTU syringe nest, our custom nest for bulk vials, and also an optique vial clip nest, expose the filled containers below the nest itself. The IPC sensor can easily get a reading of the lifted product filled into these containers. But vials in RTU cup nests and RTU cartridges are not exposed, and further development of this new 100% IPC technology is needed. For these containers, we will install our standard IPC system on the new filler also. Thank you, Bern. I would also add that the person that asked this question should sign up for the webinar regarding the new online technique for IPC and other advanced filling technologies. That webinar will air on May 5th and it will go far in depth about this new technology and how it works. Next, I want to invite Ron to answer a question for us. A viewer asked, um, you plan on performing separate IQs, OQs, and in some cases validation and PQs on individual components and then perform a PQ on the entire system. Why not just do an IQ, OQ, and PQ of the entire system? So Ron, can you answer that one for us? Another great question. Uh, so when you have a complicated system made up of several subsystems, and we need to know uh, what the outcome is coming from, 
The only way to do it accurately and reliably is to break that system down into smaller ones and test those individually before we test the entire assembly. Uh, in that way, we can be assured that we get the proper inputs and outputs at every stage leading up to uh, the assembled uh, system's output. Thank you, Ron. We can take just two more questions. Tyler, I think this next one will be a good one for you to answer. The question is, this is a very challenging system. How would you design a media fill for this? Yeah, that's a great question, Sarah. Uh, so when designing the, the aseptic process simulation or a media fill for this line, we certainly have to consider the different type of vials, uh, cartridges, and syringes that we'll be filling. Um, we'll also have to consider uh, the largest batch size that our customers may be a asking us to do and uh, include all the typical interventions that you find with a aseptic processing. Tyler, I'd like to expand on that. Since we're installing a robotic fill line, which is new to BSM, careful assessment will be conducted for the development of the aseptic media fill protocol. We will be incorporating routine interventions from our existing line that will also apply to the new line, such as stop or addition, staging of materials, and shift change, to name a few. Thoughtful consideration will be given to defining the non-routine interventions, which are the worst case activities that could pose risk to aseptic production, such as equipment adjustments. But as Tyler said earlier, we have a webinar on this topic alone that we invite you to sign up for. Thank you, Debbie um, and Tyler, of course, for those responses. I agree that this viewer should watch that webinar about the media fill validation approach to flexible filling lines um, we, because we actually get asked this question a lot. Finally, and definitely my favorite question, we'll go to Sean again. So Sean, one of our viewers asked, many of the technologies you have mentioned are not new technologies. What makes this line innovative if it's using technologies that already exist? That's another really excellent question. It reminds me of the story of Robert Kearns, the developer of the intermittent wiper. In a patent infringement suit, Ford argued that the patent was invalid because none of the technologies that Robert Kearns used were unique. However, Robert Kearns argued, in, uh, and it's, this is uh, shown in a movie, Flash of Genius, that it wasn't the uniqueness of the technologies but the way that they were all put together in combination to create a very unique process or a very unique piece of equipment. I feel that that's what we have here. Isolators, pulse light, flexible fillers, robots, 100% IPC, these are all not new. But the combination of all of these technologies into one filling line to create a filling line which will give the optimal and sterility assurance level is the unique part of this filling line. Well said, Sean. That's all the questions that we're going to take today. If you didn't get your question answered, which I know that there are many of you that didn't, um, don't stress out. We will reach out to you with the answers following this webinar, but we have run out of the time out of time for today's event. I want to thank each of the following companies that were involved in today's event. Berkshire Steel Manufacturing, Steriline, Colinar, Genesis, Ema, and last but not least, Clarinor. I'm not going to keep you guys any longer, but I will provide you with the contact information for each of these group and a follow-up email to each of you, and I will include the recording of this webinar. Um, if you watched all the way to the end, thank you so much. I hope that you got something useful out of today's event, and I hope that you join us for future events. Um, have a lovely rest of your week.